42. Held this evening in the what do you call this? The emergency operations center. The emergency operations center on the police station. Uh, we are down one member tonight uh, who was not joining us by myself, so that's good to go the capability here. The Central Planning Board is committed to providing an environment of respect for meetings. We ask all members to interact with polite manner even when there is a disagreement. We value the participation of our community and want all participants, including marginalized and minoritized communities, to feel welcome and respected. We ask our community members and all who participate to commit to these standards to support and respect our community. We have a post your agenda. We don't have a second. Second. I'll put it up. Aye. Sherry, can you text him? I do not have a phone call. Okay, so uh, first is a public hearing. A site plan administrator reviewing a special permit for Michigan to build a stormwater permit in the village center and neighborhood district. There is an immediate continuance on this project tonight. Do you want me to read? Please. Okay, this is for 61 and Brooklyn. I move to accept the applicant's request to continue the public hearing for site plan administrator review and special permit for mixed use building and stormwater permit in the village center and neighborhood district. Greenwich Gateway District, Greenwood Point Transit Village Subdistrict, BCN, GDG, NDTB, until January 12, 2023, at 6.30 p.m., and to continue the time for action for filing with the town of work until April Accessory dwelling special permit and section 940 referrals. Planning board will conduct a public hearing at 6 30 p.m. on Thursday, November 17, 2022, in the Joseph P. Norton Emergency Operations Center, 800 Chief Justice Christian Highway. The subject of the hearing is an application submitted by uh, applicant owners Gregory and Kelly Knopf for an accessory dwelling special permit for an accessory dwelling and property located at 556. First Parish Road situate. Property as shown on assessor's map block parcel 31-1-42. Plans are available for review in the planning board office, etc. 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 Well. Alright. Just to identify yourself for the record, please. Uh, hi, my name is Gabriel Padilla. I am an uh, engineer from Great Consulting. I am a representation of Mr. and Mrs. Knopf. Uh, Mr. Knopf is uh, here with us. Um, so what we're uh, proposing is uh, accessory dwelling. It's going to be used um, for uh, family. Um, it's just a one bedroom accessory dwelling. It's going to have a garage and also a uh, driveway. We received comments from the water department. Originally we had water going up into uh, a water service. Uh, they told us we would have to connect to the water main. We made that uh, change in the plan. We also have uh, some comments from Board of Health, which we also um, addressed. We are ongoing with the stormwater permit um, with this uh, with this project too, in which we are proposing a rain garden uh, to mitigate stormwater runoff from the driveway and the roofs. Um, any questions? Okay. Um, so the planning board is going to have to decide. Um, the accessory dwelling is 576 square feet. Um, the floor area of the primary residence is 1960. Um, 750 square feet is allowed, or 40%, whichever is greater. The applicant is proposing an 864 square foot attached garage. Um, technically, the garage is not living space, but it makes it look like a 1,440 square foot dwelling. 
So the planning board is going to have to decide if it's subordinate or not, um, and how that how they feel about that. Um, it's a little vague on what the accessory dwelling is going to look like. The accessory dwelling is supposed to look like the primary dwelling, and so I think that you need to ask some of those questions um, for that. We have the comments from from the water and. Um, they are showing the new water line, um, you know, and ultimately it can be conditioned that the, I mean, getting a water line and there's going to be tight because the rain garden for the common driveway is right there. Um, but that's what the water department wants and the Board of Health um, needs additional information. That's kind of the rundown at the moment. It's not very clear. Um, you have to convince me that this is not two houses on one lot. That accessory dwelling with the attached garage is not subordinate to the primary dwelling. So you need to convince me otherwise. That's my first thing. Anybody else? Ms. Burma. I agree with you. I think it's too much. Ms. Lewis. Uh, do you have any, what is going in the garage? I guess is the question. Uh, just uh, people. Uh, I would defer that question to Mr. Knopf. Mayor? Sure. Please um, identify yourself. Gregory Knopf, 556 First Parish. Currently, we have no garage parking. We have no garage. We have no barn. The garage is actually subdivided and split with my friend and neighbors over here. Um, so, uh, that's the part. Can you say that name there? Currently, your garage. Well, when, we, when, the, when the land was originally subdivided. 12 years ago, the garage to our house actually was kicked to the other side. So the way they decided. So that was in 2011, right? Yes, okay. correct. Okay. So um, we just it's garage parking, and I understand that 24 by 36 sounds big, um, but the structure itself would be close to medium, so it's really not that large on the inside. Um, it's storage right now. I have a shed, and we have very little storage in the house uh, for anything. Cellars are not really usable, so it's it's mainly for that, for things like lawn tractor, which sits outside for the most part, a lot of the outdoor stuff. Um, that's, that's the primary reason. And then it was a little bit simpler uh, originally, and then my father uh, moved out here, relocated these in the back, and um, so that, hence the accessory call. So, not a final, but I can give you an indication of um, other than what do you have a did you have an elevation in there? Yeah. So that that's just yeah that's very simple. So that front gable is actually the barn. Yeah. The accessory dwelling would be that uh, perpendicular gable um, and connected only by roof. That makes sense. Yep. And then there's a floor plan too. I don't know if you guys have this. Again, these are just my sketches. This is not, these are not builder drawn yet, which we plan to do next month. So it won't look like that. It'll be finished on the outside, obviously, but you can see. So you've already started to build that. No, 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 that's what it would look like. It'll be obviously sided, similar to our house. Um, if it's cedar shakes or what, it's TBD, but it won't. But that's the one I the session Well, it would go off this side. I mean, if I had anything else here, that would help. Let me shoot this. Is this going to help a little bit? Do you have the ACD of this one? And I sent pictures to the board this week of what the primary dwelling looks like. It's an old 17 by 41 farmhouse. This is what, you know, 
they're proposing. This is the driveway that they have. This is the common driveway. They basically be somewhere in there, and this is further up on the top. Yeah. So my question is, that's a little crowded on that driveway. So although our bylaw tells you that you could have three lots on the common driveway, I think you would have five or six driveways. Is that correct? Well, we have one now. If there was another for us, five. Is that right? Five total. That would be correct. Yeah. Five. There's two across the way, and one in the way, in the way back from the lot. Back. Yeah. Up from the lot. Four. Five. It's a little crowded. A little crowded. For the West End. <laughs> well, we're only talking about. Are we also doing common driveway? No, the common driveway is already been approved. Okay. Common, common, common driveway was constructed in 2011, so we're not talking about the common right, driveway. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. No, no, the common driveway was already approved. Mr. McLean? Uh, nothing right now. Thank you. Okay. As far as accessory, so I, I personally don't, I, I understand the accessory use structure being the garage, and um, I think that's a great uh, idea, you know, if you need it, to have some other sort of use on your property for structure, um, and I also think that it makes sense to do the accessory building as part of that construction rather than having a third building or adding it to your house, which might be more so just like complicated or undesirable if you're living with other family members. Um, I guess to Patty's point about kind of the size of mass, um, one question I have is kind of in regards to the, the ceiling height of the accessory dwelling and then the roof height um, of the of, of kind of keeping the same roof height coming across. This adds a lot of mass. And since your calculated floor area can only be on the first floor, I guess I question why you need so much uh, Roof space above the ceiling. Perhaps there's architecturally a way to maybe step the roof down a bit, and like if you need some sort of fenestration, you add like a, you could add another gable like to make it yeah. ornamental or something. But I wonder if that could help to reduce the mass and then make it almost look more like a barn or a small structure yes. attached to it rather than a, a big kind of build. That was the initial thought that I had with this drawing. You can't, probably can't see it, but I had it at half because we're not going to use the upstairs. It's going to be first floor living ground. Right. It, right. And so that's actually a question that we have. We're meeting with um, the builder next month to talk about is it possible to get the right amount of pitch with a lower roof and just leave it open, which I think it is because it's post and beam. So it should be okay for them yes. to design it that way. Um, that's absolutely on the table. I would say that, that that, at least for me in terms of the mass, it would certainly yeah, it would bring that. that. Yeah, and almost make it a better looking project. And you could, you you know, it's up, obviously the look and feels up to you guys, but yeah. if you wanted to, you could even almost do something with trim work or siding that almost makes it look like more of a barn style building here with a small apartment attached to it, yes. which might further mentally reduce the yes. mass. Yeah, and I, I don't want you to take that actual visual represent. That is my sure. kind of rendering of um, what this, just based on size alone, we're certainly going to do our best to kind of make it look like it's not yeah. like that it ties in within the house. And, and you're right, I mean, we, we kicked around actually doing an addition off, off the back and kind of walked away from that because this was almost easier. The space was not used. It used to look like this. Right. And then a bunch of white pines grew in 10 years, and they're out of control. And so, um, before they all start growing and snapping, we, you know, thought that that was the best option was just to poke it back there. Okay. That that's the only comment I have now. Is if there's a way to bring down the mass of that um, kind of like secondary part where the accessory dwelling lies, I think that that would I'd be a lot more favorable to that in terms of the finding of whether it's. Uh, Subordinate to the primary dwelling. And I would have to see that before I would yes. approve accessory dwelling. Okay. We, we would have to see that. We know everybody has their very best intention, but let me tell you that never really plays out yet. Yeah, no. So um, I would suggest, if I may, sure. 
that you might want to relocate the accessory dwelling. Um, you've got this driveway, whatever. There has to be a better way to utilize this space. Having it, having the two together, have it come forward. There's a better way to do this. I know that there is. You mean separate from? It, it could still be attached, but oh. but oh. but further forward. On the lot itself, do yes. you mean? Yes. Oh. oh. So that it would, where you have the proposed concrete driveway, you bring your accessory dwelling forward so that basically it comes here, like so. It goes into your, your garage barn. So it doesn't give us the appearance that you can put a second floor up there. Okay. So the issue is the massive look yeah. of it. It's for the accessory dwelling, it's not the issue isn't that it's attached to the barn. Well, the issue is that that's a mess. You know, it's, it's the whole structure. structure. Itself. That structure has to be supported to the primary structure, which is where you live. Mm -hmm. So um, normally when we see these things, it's a second floor living or a garage, mm -hmm. which I know you don't want you guys to run downstairs. I we totally right. get that. And we are totally in favor of accessory dwellings. This is a very big building. On a, in a pretty small lodge. So, um, and I know the bottom has to be big enough to put in trunks or whatever, but um, I would actually have to see to that point. I, I have to see a drawing of that to be able to approve an accessory dwelling that would be appropriate in that particular area. Does everyone disagree? I agree. I think you, you have even said that you have to have this engineer. You have to, you're talking yes. to four yep. people and you're meeting with someone next month. I, I'm not sure that you have all of your ducks in the row here. I think that you need to do a little bit more homework and come back to us with a full book drawing. Right. With what it's actually proposed to look like. Now we need to see a reality. Which I'm sure you understand. Yes. No, I, I probably would have done that. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that that was a prerequisite for this. Or is it just well, situational? Should, no, no, I'm sure we're all uh, closer to where you want to be. Um, okay. As, as, a, as a board member, I don't deal really well in that abstract of what you think it's going to look mm -hmm. like. Because trust me, it no, never looks like that. It yeah. never, ever looks like that. Yeah. Five years out of it, it's never looked like that. Uh, and it's always kind of a slap in the face when you go out and say that's not what they told us they were going to do. So we don't want people to shake their houses down. We're not in that business either. So we don't really like to see that. So I, I would suggest that you need to go back and do a little more engineering and then come back to us with a little more concrete development, not just abstract, but that this is what we think we want to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, I plan certainly to help those. Yeah. I guess my only thought that might be a little bit different from the rest of the board is, is regarding this accessory use versus accessory dwelling. When they become combined, it becomes tricky because the bylaw says that it needs to be subordinate. However, I'm as far as accessory use structures go, I don't mind a big structure because traditionally barns were much larger than farmhouses, you know, and that's a kind of a historical aesthetic that has precedent. Um, what, what's important to me, though, is that this looks more like a barn with a small apartment attached rather than like what Patty's concerned is a second house, per se. Um, so I think like trying to, trying to nail that is going to be like the important aspect in terms of your, your architecture plan and how it, how it fits with the rest of the property. Okay. Um, but, but as far as like, I, I, I mean, I'm okay if the barn is bigger than us. Is perceived to be a bomb. Okay. Does that make yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, and then and then obviously make like I like I already mentioned, but bringing that group client down or finding a way to make the apartment that's attached to said barn look kind of smaller. Than like the shed that you've attached. Yeah. To the barn. Yeah, yeah. Like an L. Yeah. What if it's a shed group off the side of the barn? 
first is a gable end, do you know what I mean? Yes. On a perpendicular gable end. And a shed, line, a shed roof that comes off of this roof, but it's running the same way. This side is... You have to show us. Yeah, I could, we you can do that. We can do that. You have to, yep. because that, okay. it's very hard to try to figure this out. No, I'm just saying. You know what, and it's in your best interest yep. that this be um, dealt with, so that you know exactly what you're getting. <laughs> no, I know. And we knew we knew that we hadn't talked to the details yet. We were trying to jump through this first, no. just just to I think. So at least we know this though, the right? The details. The details. The details. And that and that's totally good. That's yeah. what I do. So it's, I mean, I'm I'm sorry. I, I, unfortunately, uh, Okay. Why did you care to somebody else? Yeah, sure. I just want to ask a counter question. Is the, is the rain, is this stormwater infrastructure here, this rain garden for this lot or for the common track? No, this is for the so accessory dwelling in the barn. Okay, it's for it. So this. I have a separate stormwater permit for this, which is not, it's not, it's administrative review, so it's not, planning board doesn't have to rule on it. I sure. have a separate one for the barn. And the accessory okay, but to Anne's point, things could move. This, this, that's what I, I just didn't know if this rain garden area was part of the common drive. No, there's it's, rain it's, gardens along the edge of the common drive. Yeah, that, I see those. That can't be touched. Can't sure. Be okay, but okay. that's all. That's all. Thank you. So although it's illusion right now, that rain garden. Right. Right. Can I just ask a clarifying question about when you were saying move it? Were you saying move the the face of the accessory dwelling forward? The whole thing. The whole thing. The whole footprint? Yeah. So that it becomes... Wouldn't it be tighter, though, up against that rain garden? If that stayed... Can the rain garden move, Karen? No, not in the driveway. No, 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 no. In the flat. That's what I was getting. Can this move? I don't know. I mean, I'm not the engineer. All right. See, I mean, right now, issue. we don't have... I mean, we... They've got comments back on the first pass of the, of the plan, and you know, if, if, if it needs to change, it needs to change. Right. But you could also, rather than moving it forward, you could move it back so mm -hmm. that it becomes deliberate. You need an architect. We have, we're talking. Okay. We got them. We got them. I'll bring you better drawings next time. And and they'll and they'll know uh, and they'll that architect will know what our concerns are. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. So while engineering is great, we all to be that aesthetic book. Which what did I say? All architects are engineers, but not all engineers are architects. It's the opposite. Who knows? Engineers are better. <laughs> 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 all right, Kevin. What do you say? So. Bear in mind that it has to be a subordinate, and also bear in mind that the accessory dwelling shall be designed so that the appearance of the building remains unchanged as much as feasible and possible. You've got, to, you've got to present to the board how it's really going to look. Right. Uh -huh. I mean, it, it can't be bad. Um, how long do you think you need for to get something together? Um, Knowing what the board wants now. My guess is we'll, we're looking at January at this point. Okay, so we have time either January 12th or we have January 26th meeting. Um, I'd say the 26th. Okay, for now. so plenty of time so that so everything gets out and comes back so you're not coming back over and over. If that doesn't, do I just, if that time isn't enough? Or do I just not set the time right now? No, we you have to. Uh, I got to set time. Be, um, so time January 26th. So yeah. what I am going to ask though is I'm going to ask for a continuance of the stormwater permit okay. to beyond that to um, February. I want I want a continuance for both of them until February 10th, 2023, okay. so that because obviously. The stormwater ties to the accessory dwelling. I don't want to give you a stormwater permit and then have have you go change everything. Right. And um, because you'll you'll be coming back on the stormwater permit. Does that sound reasonable?
in the ball? Yes. Do we need you to take input from the public at this time? It's a public hearing. It's a public hearing. Anybody in the audience have something they'd like to tell us? Next one, please. <laughs> <laughs> or across yeah. the driveway. We just came to you know, learn about the project. Can you just please identify yourself? Yeah, yeah, sure. Nate, just identify yourself with your name. Uh, Peter Sabian. And when do you say you? 562 First Parish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we just wanted to come to learn. You know, we'll talk. With GT about the project uh, a bit here and there, so we're obviously aware, but uh, we're not familiar with the details of what the building would look like. So the concerns that you have been expressing are you know, ones that we'd be interested to learn about as well. Would you have any other concerns that you would like us to consider? Um, I mean, in a, I guess not specifically. Just you know, our house. Our house faces uh, away from First Paris towards the site where they'll be building on it. So it's kind of like, you know, out our front door is where the project will be. So for that reason, we're obviously, you know, interested in what the what the building will look like and the impact that it might have on the overall property. So I think what people have to know is we all know where you live and we all go to see where you live, so we all kind of know like what's going on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we all kind of know visually what, what you're trying to get about. All of us are I, I particularly take a ride by to make sure I know where I'm talking about. So um can I, have, I would just add that fifth driveway, I don't think it's one store too much or anything like that. We have two driveways. They have a driveway. The neighbor up the end of the street has a, you know, they go right into their driveway. And so I think this is, you know, not going to disturb. Yeah, I don't see the driveway uh, part of it as an issue for not a like road for it. Right it's more house. the, you know, the appearance of uh, exactly. the building. Yeah. Do you have a copy of our exception? I do. Okay, yes. So you know what you're looking at. Okay, and do you have a motion, please? I, I, have, I just have a motion to this. Oh, sure. I'm counting off um, Greg's wife, who, who is um, also asking for this permit. Um, 556 North Parish Road. And I just wanted to say that um, we only want a very classic looking barn. We want it to look very New England. We love our stone wall. We love our 1741 antique cape house that we live in. And so this dwelling that we're hoping to build this garage, this barn, we're hoping to have very have it feel very authentic and very New England, and we would never want it to look like it is a second dwelling or a second um, house. That's all I wanted to say. I want you to be assured that it will look like a barn, truly. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I move to accept the applicant's request to continue the public hearing the accessory dwelling special permit for 556 First Parish Road to January 26, 2023, 6.30 p.m., and to continue the time for action prior to town work until February 10, 2023. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving along. Mr. Lynch, we have an important discussion about 94 place. Uh, landscape business out of the site. Uh, 
Uh, what we'd like to do is raise the existing dwelling unit and construct five um, cottage units that will surround a courtyard. Uh, we are asking for a density bonus to increase the number of units from three to five. Um, we would propose a parking area in the front of the site consisting of 10 spaces. Um, and stormwater from the site will, from the parking lot will be routed to the subsurface infiltration system below the parking lot. Uh, we're proposing to connect into water, sewer, and underground electric. Um, we provided a, a rendering of what the site will look like approximately when it's finished, uh, as well as a landscape plan. And we really just wanted to meet tonight to get some uh, comments from the board on the project and uh, keep that before we submit the formal application. So I'm just open up for some questions. My very first question is that you have any feedback from fire department? Not yet. Okay, that's a huge problem because there's no way you can into those buildings without a driveway and where is your fire hydrant. So we have two fire, there's currently two fire hydrants near the property. Uh, there's one right, right around here and there's one here. Okay. They're very close proximity to the property. And we could actually propose one up in the back here as well. Because we, so, we are running a water main down the left hand side of the back. Well, I actually talked to uh, the deputy chief the other day. Okay. And he had some pretty big concerns about the plan. Um, the buildings are not required to be sprinklered because they're one and a half stories. So if one goes on fire, more than one is going to go on fire. That's, I mean, his words. Um, and how is fire, how is the fire truck going to access? Fire truck, I mean, he can't get to the back. It's a problem. Yeah, you have to think about fire access. I mean, plus your fire truck is going to have to back out of there. I mean, the ladder truck is going to have to come in, and then he's going to have to back up. How, how does he get to that last unit? That was that was his comment. Right. So currently, there is a access gate right over here on this side. I mean, obviously, yeah, we get a fire truck on that side. And there's access to here, all the way up to here, this side of the road. Uh, this parking lot does extend here on that side of the property as well. But we can uh, meet with the fire department and see. The access gate on the other one that you're referring to is not for this project. That is right. For, that was specifically for 50 Country Way that they had to obtain an easement from the MBTA for. Okay. And that they, the fire truck can go down there and go out through a place. Where is that exactly? You can go down here? He, he can go down Drew, Drew Place, yes. Yep, and can you go down here? No. As well? No, no. There's no easement for that. Yep. I mean, so, you know, I know you did, by building code, you don't have to sprinkler, but I mean, that could be a an option. To, yeah. I, it could be a solution to your to the problem. Yeah, I, I believe they, you know, when the units are that close, they could use some sort of um, different materials in the houses. Sorry. Okay. He was also con concerned about the, clo the close proximity. Some of these aren't, don't even appear to be 10 feet apart. They're all 10 feet apart except for the porch that right here. Well, that's, 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 that's what he yeah. pointed out. That's exactly what he pointed Right, he, that's he, the, he the point, porch, which we can, we can modify that. He, that's exactly what he pointed out. I mean, I just he was at one of my other meetings, and I just said, hey, you want to just take a quick look at it so I can give them some feedback? Right. And so um, that's. That's where it says comments. Right, we can meet with the buyer comments and come up with a solution as far as access. But I mean, just bear in mind if you're proposing to use anything in the back, you have to get your easements. That, right. That's MBTA. And I mean, it, was, it wasn't easy to get that easement for 50 country work. Okay. And I don't believe, I know that the fire truck could barely get that. Right, to provide a turnaround on the site for a fire truck would use up the entire lot. Right. So I, the, those are, I mean, I just, I happened to talk to him at one of my meetings this week, so. So you know, Mr. Rich, I love this project, and I've said from day one, it's one building too big for me. Yeah. And I've said that. So anybody else have anything? Mr. McCoy? Nope. I mean, fire thing one thing, and I would also be concerned Look, it's a great idea, but how are the people at the very end even going to move in? What, 
your trunk. Where's the trunk going to go? The same way as you move into a pocket building. I mean, I guess. Carry. Carry is. I thought about that. You thought this was. Yeah. Um, so that would have been my only thing. But I, I like the lower buildings. I think they're nice. The pocket building gets. Because there's a lot of taller buildings. I'm so sorry. Are these going to be apartments? Yeah, it's going to be condos. So she sold seven. They're going to be sold seven. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, by definition, a cottage court, they can be no more than 1,400 square feet. And the courtyard has to be a minimum of 3,000 square feet. That, that's by definition. Um, I mean, fire access aside, which I totally defer to the fire department on, I don't really pass any judgment on that. Um, I, I really like this plan. I think this is when we did the rezoning in Greenbush and we added this to the form based zoning codes that we put in. I think this is, at least for me, exactly what I had in mind for the cottage court type development. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the different types of development uh, models they have in Pine Hills and Plymouth, but there's a yeah. cottage court that's mm -hmm. very similar to this now that it's mature and the trees are growing in and it's very uh, pleasing. And I think it, compared to the scale of <laughs> buildings and rivers that continually shock me when they come to our board, uh, this is, it, it's, it has a much more neighborhood feel and it's much, it, it preserves a lot of open space and helps add a lot to kind of the look and feel of the whole neighborhood. And I can tell that more went into the design of this site rather than just trying to ram in the largest building on this footprint that you have. So I appreciate that. And um, I, I, I mean, I, jet, I, I like the concept, obviously, there will be lots of details that we work out if you, you know, apply for a permit with this. But um, I think on first pass, I, I, I like the concept and I'm glad that you're trying to go for this one. Thank you. Well, I love the concept. I agree. Um, I love the concept. Uh, I do think that there might be one too many, but if there's any possibility of shrinking down one or two of them, it's small. I mean, actually, it's probably going to be big. It's not that. I know they're 14, but if you could sneak it down just a little bit so that you can pick up, especially with um, number four because it's too close to the number um, three. Three. And um, I, I think you can hopefully work out with the fire department. It is a quite short <coughs> issue of what we wanted. Um, and I know you're working very diligently on this to make it work. I, I would have been that when we did this overlay district, this is this is why I was told about this overlay. Right? Really? It doesn't. <laughs> oh, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, this is really what I was hoping to trouble. Of course, they were never going to go over that. But I, I love this one, the way that said, really speaks to our lot of our about keeping that neighborhood with the field, which is what we don't really have. So, further steps? I mean, I think, I think you might want to go with the deputy chief, you know, right. um, and review some of this stuff. Um, I don't know if there's a possibility. Again, I'm trying to think outside the box. I think it's too dense myself, too. But I don't know if there's a way to make one of the pathways in the courtyard be constructed so like with a grass creek or something. So that like a geo grid underneath yeah, that could support a fire truck. Right, that could support a fire truck that, you know, it wouldn't look like it wouldn't look like a um, you know, wouldn't look like it would look like grass, but still be able to support the fire truck, although right. if that's a very long distance, then the fire truck would have to back out. Yeah. And that that is that was that's a concern. But I don't know if that's a possibility 
to have you know a main group that way because I know that it has the jail whatever you know you want to call it has been used elsewhere in town as fire as fire lanes um, so that you can access I mean um, we would also help with your recognition if you had furniture just daily. Right. I mean, it, yeah, could, it would only could only yeah. be used. Uh, you know, a well, I mean, you could. I mean, I would think you'd want a moving truck to be able to use it too. Yeah, but I mean, Next under it would have to be under supervised control or something like that. Um, so um, I, I don't know if that's a, a possibility. Um, I think ideally there, there needs to be more greenery trees and trucks for this development. So the landscape plan was developed and there's a lot of things that need to be done. Yes, yeah, so we got a landscape architect to prepare a landscape plan it's for the last sheet. So it's quite a few plans in sight. Okay. I, I didn't really I didn't really look at that. I mean I'm I, I'm thinking of you know because Greenbush I mean, because they, they're concerned about heat islands now, you know, having enough trees. But yes, I, I see now that you are. Uh, I, I, I didn't really look at that. Yeah, we have landscape islands in the park of Mount Trevor. We use more shade in the park of Mount Well, as long as those shrubs in the islands aren't big, then it has to be ground cover because you have to be able to see. And you yes. have to um, indicate, you know, snow storage and all that kind of stuff. Right, we have snow storage on the plant that we do. So I think one of the problems is that as your last year, you may have no problems. We we know that there's a heat index problem between Bush already. Really? Right. Doesn't it's, our wind turbine knock down all that heat? <laughs> Man. So I know. That's a little off the time of what <laughs> So, you know, I mean that's so yeah, but I didn't find that, right? We're starting to get... Oh, I mean, we're starting... When we have vast expanses of pavement, pavement yeah. I mean, you just want to make sure it's broken. It's broken up. And, um, you know, I guess you really have to think about who's going to plow that and if they would, can really get the snow where you say they can get right. it. Right. It'll be a challenge to plow regardless. It's a it challenge is. to plow. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so you're going to need an expert plow. Yeah, like we do it.
between phases. Okay. And and then, their phase. You mentioned that. You know, because um, as you know, Ford Place is very, very tiny. Um, and, you know, it, the size of trucks that can get down there is, is limited. So just think about that in your construction plan. Requisition of $202.50 to Chessie Consulting for peer review services for 61 Madrid Way. $2,028 to Chessie Consulting for peer review services for 33 New Madrid Way slash 7 McDonald Terrace for $948 to Chessie Consulting for peer review services for 48 to 52 Madrid Way uh, gas station for $285. Chessie Consulting for peer review services for 7 Madrid Way for $375 to Merrill Corporation for peer review services for 16 Manhill Road for $1,050 to Merrill Corporation for peer review services for 6 McDonald Terrace for $1,047.40 to Morrisley Whitten Group for peer review services at Seaside and Situate for $1,777.90 down a situation for 700 way water bill from leftover guaranteed funds from traffic peer review. I can explain that. <laughs> Mr. Pollock for 7 New Driftway has extra money to remake new accounts for, for 7 New Driftway. We had a traffic one for the traffic, in, traffic review and a chess here. There's extra money in the traffic period. Mr. Pollock has a back water bill. And in order to be able to file the decision with the town clerk, the water bill has to be paid off. And so it's that he can use the money from the peer review and the check goes right to the town of Situate, you know, because it's it's money that's it's owed. So with all, all that, this PO is for that. It's all straightened out. The it's a, the decision was filed with the town clerk today, and so the check will be cut next week. It seemed like a good solution to the problem, and he understands that if there's any traffic issues that we need to bring back a traffic engineer on, um, he'll provide more money later later on. It seemed like a good way to handle the issue and have the town get its, its money. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So then we, I guess we will liaison. Okay. Um, who's first? You can go first. Um, we'll just out of there. Um, yeah, what is going on with CPC and all your money? Oh, don't go there. Um, I have to be stuck in one minute. 
job here. If we were to do everything that they want to do that these 12 applicants want, we don't have the money. Very simple. So we talked about, and they have to come back with more, we will park windows. The we will park windows are almost $600,000 for 78 units. It's 300 and some odd windows. So there's that. And you know, there, should, there has to be some type of grant money. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there has to be something. So I charge them with talking to whomever to see what they can come up with. Because okay. this is, and they have let this go for so many years. So let me ask you this. Does the housing trust have anything to do with that? No. Okay. Thank you. All right. And then we had the pickleball court. And he came in. His name is um, John Nagel. And he was looking for, what did he want? A lot of people. He wanted $500,000. And he really wasn't sure. He wanted to put it behind the library, but he can't look at 10 courts or something like that. He can't because it's all wet. And then, you know, it was just back and forth, back and forth. One suggestion that would, might work is to put it in your situate in the parking lot in front of the kids' parking lot because you can get the pickle board, pickle ball, but, and you still have 80 parking spaces. But the bottom line is there's um, a study underway in the tennis courts at the high school. And once that has been completed, then we can figure out where to go from there. And, and where is that study? God knows. <laughs> it's Jamie. Yeah, that was his thing. Beware the pickleball lobby. It's a big thing now. No, I know. Oh, it's time. like taking over New York City. Like all the parks and stuff, like yeah. kids are getting. They like, even do it in the wintertime. Yes. <laughs> do we want that in our town? But you know, you can see where the tennis courts to be pickleball courts, the tennis courts. And um, gates are one of them at least is striped to be a pickleball. Yeah, yeah she's going to play it. There are five tennis courts at gates. Which, you, which you have to have the LIAA. You have to have five courts because you have two singles and a double. I remember that from playing tennis in high school. So you, you need to have those courts. What they do with the high school courts is different, but gates has to stay for a type of And then, and then. We have um, beach signage, and they're looking for a bit of money here too. Um, they want about nineteen, twenty thousand dollars, and they want it to look the branding. They have to talk to the selectmen. I told them to go see EBC for some money because that's who started the signage to begin with. Was EBC, and then we have the Cudworth House renovations and they're looking to put in the cut is around 648 and it has to do with pathways because there's really no access off the driveways to get to the place that was supposed to be part of when the senior center went in you know they're claiming that this is a campus but is it really that's a matter of opinion they also want to move the well which is fake. Oh. Um, and it, it's right next to the driveway, so they want to move that forward. And they had um, a serious situation. They were inhabited with a family of skunks. Oh. Yeah. And there are a few things that the, the, um, there was damage, and of course, insurance didn't cover it. I don't understand why, but it didn't. Why? Wildlife. It was an act of God that the skunks moved in. Just like the squirrel that moved into my place. Wildlife was taken over. Yeah, the purple dinosaur. We got the deer. And the purple dinosaur was done, what, 25, 30 years ago. And they're looking for 224000 and actually, it's not a bad thing. Are they actively fundraising? Yes, they are. Yeah, I, I see that everywhere. Yeah, they are actively fundraising. 
and the initial uh, playground was totally built with fun. Uh, yeah, I do remember yeah. that. Yeah. So there was that, and pretty much people, and then we finally had the train camp, and please God, would that ever be finished? Um, and they are looking for basically 31,000 of that. And that has to do with lights and picnic benches and trash barrels and whatever, but everything has to be bolted down, otherwise you can see can't pay for it. And it's almost, almost done. So, it's, um, the three big projects are, Jenkins School is looking for uh, another playground, 600 grand. Uh, Wombatuck is looking for a preschool playground, 350,000. And then of course, Pickleball, which is 500. Um, so it, it's just, it's a lot of money that we really don't have for this type of thing. I, I just have a question yes. on the, for the, the playgrounds that are supposed to go to the elementary schools. Are those for the use of the school children? Or the preschool program? I don't know. And see, this is the big issue. And this is something that was discussed. The uh, dinosaur playground is used all day. Right. It's, oh, all, it's, it's all day. The schools, you know yeah. so much, you yeah. can't. Yeah. So to spend that kind of money for something that cannot be used during the day, I think people have some trouble with that. And it's uh, on the school budget. Yeah. Well, duh. C that's the issue I brought in the field, too. Sure. Yeah, that's a good point. I think the school budgets, the buildings, and then the inside. Yes, no, I think that was the case. That's the case. That's, the case. that's, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's good. They yeah. used to get yeah. to take care of all of them. Yeah. Oh, the two moms. The town took to to that away from Yeah, well, two of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was CBC. And we meet again in December for another So how do you rank for what this done? Um, really, basically, it's what makes sense. And what was nice, um, they came in, who was it came in? Something. I think it was the Cudworth Renovations. They had half of that 64,000 they already had their hand. And that's what we like to see. We want to see some type of fundraising some funds so that it's not totally yeah. easy. But we are just doing that. Right? It just helps them get over it. It helps them get something. And I'm concerned about the um, lighthouse. There's, there's two million for the lighthouse and I, with the cost of everything, I have a feeling that it's going to be in excess. Okay, do they know what they're going to reconstruct there or they replace it? Nope. They, they look at it? I thought they were supposed to build that board cake out. They had to take it off and put it down and just figure out what was what. So windows are as bad as you said at Wheeler Park. That would cost a lot more too. Because yeah. when they say demo, they'll see all the water damage. They'll have to do way more. We have, and they have to hire an architect and that, for this project. And it's all for family wage. And it's on and on. There's 300 plus windows that need to be. I said it should be part of the capital plan. It should be something besides something. CBC. But, yeah. CBC, CBC, CBC. Oh, my. Well, we do have affordable that housing. We do that type of thing. But we have to come up with something. Otherwise, it's easy. Right. Well, we really, unfortunately, living with these windows for too long a time. Too long. It really is unfortunate that our most of these citizens actually live in really places that I would not want to live in. That's right. That's mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you saw it in um, the home section, address section of the globe a while, a few weeks ago. It had to do with condoms yep. and water. Mm -hmm. The water bill of situation housing is $100,000. Because it is one meter for each group. 
it is not individually metered, which pushes this group into the stratosphere. If it were a commercial rate, it would be less money. But they go into that higher tier for usage? Probably. That's why that's just a joke, because they base that on two family. Yeah, family. And not everyone has two people living in their house. Yeah. Some people have seven or eight or six. It's it's really unfair. That's just my kind of thousand dollars. Okay. Well, CPC has their charge cut off for them. So I suggested to the liaison for Housing Authority that she go and sit down with the chair of the Housing Authority Committee and the town administrator and the chairman of the Board of Selectmen who is in charge, she was part of the Water Commissioners and figure it out. I don't care for it. 
I like the one, I like something more like Hingham, where it's off, where it's off. And it meanders through. And it meanders, yeah. But, so Rebecca, I was thinking of you today because I went to drive with us so in the new, in the new sidewalks, the buildings are concrete. And they're beautiful, aren't they? They are beautiful. They are concrete slabs with granite carving. I said, oh, I'm a total Methodist. They are, and they're huge. And very, very attractive. You are absolutely right about that. Yeah, I'm homesick. I'll just go. I do can go there if you're homesick. I can go to the first floor while you're over there. So other than that, um, it's just a crazy time of the year. So everybody's super busy. So, um, all right. So, uh, yeah, no more money for real for CPC. Okay. Well, so do we want to take the agenda a little out of order since we have yes, stars to the public workshop, public workshop in here, Mr. Berger? Yeah, Mr. Berger, since you're here. Good evening. Good evening. So, Mr. Berger, we just saw you last week. Oh, you did. You get the pleasure of my company. Again, you will be at our here. It's a special day for you. It is. Thank you for having me on the agenda. Okay. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a little confused. Did you bring us another drawing? Another drawing? Yeah. Is this the new drawing? This, this, that's, that's a new drawing. That's a new drawing. That was submitted today. That was submitted today. Oh, I see. Sorry. Okay. So, so can you explain this red line to me a little more? That's the... Uh, the deviation of uh, the fence line, where the fence would actually be installed. So, is, if, if I, so right now. Oh, wait a minute, can we just take a back step oh, back, sure. please? Mr. Berwick wants the board to reconsider allowing him to do a fence. Mm -hmm. And at the, you know, above, at the edge of his property. Um, so that that's why when he asked to come back in tonight, we said, you can come back in and talk to the board. So why don't, you know, just so everybody's on the same page here. So that's why we're here. So, so I, can I make a statement? Yeah, you can make a request. Yeah. Um, I'm requesting approval tonight to start six foot white vinyl fencing along the southeast property line adjacent to the 17 new driftwood property. This request is also in, on behalf of several buyers who have units under agreement. They were glad to learn that a patio had been approved, but at the same time expressed great concern if a fence is not erected as shown on the plan that you have before you. These concerns include a desire for quiet enjoyment, privacy and separation from the busy commercial adjacent property, and the inability to prevent foot traffic both to and from the various businesses to their only outdoor area to congregate if a fence is not installed. They question why a fence would be approved at the rear of the property separating residential properties, but not be approved in the area separating commercial and residential, which is a good point because the Six McDonald Terrace property is in the Greenbush Village Center and 17 New Driftway is in the Gateway Business District, two different zoning districts. In addition, the New Driftway property already has existing approved fencing as shown on the plan. That's in the bottom, there's a picture on the bottom right of the plan. On the far side, that's on the far side of CP's Pizza. And the proposed fencing would be a, the same type of fencing on the 6 McDonald Terrace side of CP's Keys. The fact is fencing is, of this style is everywhere around town, and especially along property lines that separate properties with different uses. I took a few pictures this morning of these types of locations. Be happy to share them. So Mr. Burrick, when I looked at your original drawing last week, we do have this red line here. Mm -hmm. There was a stockade fence on that, correct? Last week, uh, yeah, there was a fence. Last week it said stockade fence. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. he wants a vinyl, he wants the six-foot vinyl fence, not a stockade fence. The same fence is shown on the plan. 
which is already in place on the, on the property line. That is, I, I didn't go down there today, and I, it, there is this fence is at the CP's area. It's beyond the CP's area, it's, but it, 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 it's, it, it it's is. It's along the side of the river. Here. It's right. It yeah. is, so it, it it's absolutely, day. it's absolutely there. So, so, so I have to orient myself here so that when I am looking at this picture, this is right way, this is looking at this way, right? Yes. So, in the original drawing, you have trees. Just want to clarify this. Yeah. You have trees covering the parking lot, and there was nothing in front of the building, correct? Correct. Okay. How are we doing with the riprap? It's going to be removed starting Monday. Okay. Um, I personally would prefer to have greenery, something natural, but that's my personal preference. We need to move to the board. It's a good decision. So, uh, this is for a fact. Was this fence proposed in the beginning? No. It was a stockade fence there. No, the stockade no. wasn't proposed in the beginning. No, it wasn't. No fence was proposed in the beginning. Which was really an oversight. Which was an oversight. It really should have been on the original. Yeah, that's right. Now, at this point, what is the point? I don't know. There is no point. Just, I'm more concerned about the stupid rip rap. That's coming up. And how you're going to deal with that slope and how that's going to. And once you put up this fence, how do you access maintaining it? Uh, from the driftway property. It has to be maintained. Yes, it's a it requirement. does. It will be. But then would it be wise to put in, but then again, these are condos, correct? Correct. So the condo association will be in charge of landscaping and maintaining? Correct. And maintaining it? Yep. They have, there is a budget, an existing budget. Good uh, landscaping is part of the budget. So aren't they going to need a gate to get, I was just gonna say to get, to get down there? Right. I, I think they're going to need yeah. a gate to theoretically like maintain the river up uh, the grass slope. Yeah. If it would be, I we should wait. Uh, we, or we can end the fence before that line. But you have trees there. They have wandered through the trees. Let's make it simple. Put in a gate thought. Just put in a gate. You would like a gate to be happy to put a gate. So You're done with it. I, I just have a question. Uh, I don't have a question. Uh, I, I I fully understand you. The prospective buyer's concerns that that makes sense to me. Um, but however. I'm, I, did, I, get, I guess just the look and feel of six foot tall white vinyl fence at that elevation that's visible from the road is not very desirable for me anyways. Um, I'm wondering perhaps if you could solve those solutions by I guess increasing the size and density of plantings kind of around the patio area where people might spend time outside and then to deal with Sorry, I'm wearing my landscape designer hat right now. Um, and then to deal with kind of the potential access and trespass issues that you mentioned, people maybe cutting through, maybe something like a, a split rail fence, um, either two rails high or if you want it higher, three rails high. Um, you could always put a wire mesh on it too if you want it more closed off, but something that would prohibit access but have more of a, an open kind of traditional looking aesthetic that wouldn't have that mass that a solid fence would have at that higher elevation. Um, just to me, that would be a better look. That's, again, that's beauty as an added of the holder, I guess. Um, that being said, a lower, it was already discussed in the last meeting that the slope would likely have to be maintained by someone with a, a weed whacker rather than a mower, and a split rail fence would allow Usually, landscapes are in fairly good shape. It would allow someone to climb over that fence to access, and they could trim under it with a weed whacker rather than the solid fence, which becomes like 
you have to go pull out and around or put a key. So, um, that's just my opinion, but that's wrong. I hear what you're I was out there today, this morning. I don't have a problem with the white fence. I think, I mean, if I was living here, I would want, I wouldn't want to necessarily look out at some piece and all the traffic that's in here. Um, and I feel like, again, it would not as many people would be crossing through. There's just, just a lot of, you know, kids are going up in that dance class. There's a ton of cars just idling right there, so it would cut down some of the noise for these people will probably help me in the whole neighborhood because it is very open between there and your way, which is so I don't I don't have a problem with white mask. I think and then I don't think I don't have a problem. I think white fence would be fine there. That's my opinion. And maybe you just put some um planting to behind it so then it would make Yeah, I, I agree. I think from the, if you're a, an owner in, in this building, right, you do want the privacy fence. So I'm definitely for the privacy fence because that is a very busy area at all times of the day, you know, Saturday mornings, you know, up to in the evenings. It's, there's always a lot going on in there. Um, you know, maybe breaking up the silhouette of it with plantings in the riprap area because it is a six foot high fence on top of a on the top of a slope, maybe that would be good as opposed to just, you know, having a grassy hole there kind of thing. But um, definitely for the uh, the privacy fence because it separates the neighborhood from the commercial area. So I want to speak for Mr. Pritchard because I know he did a So uh, what the, the vinyl fence provides definitely provides more privacy than the shrubbery does. Uh, and again, it prevents the pass through uh, that we have concerns about. It's also a wind, which there is quite a bit of wind on the ripway. Uh, wind and noise barrier that the shrubs would not provide. And in the winter, uh, when you get a snowstorm, the branches collapse on evergreen and you're going to see you're going to lose your privacy uh, when, when there's snowstorm. Uh, there's no watering required for a fence or fertilizer. The, the town is very uh, you know, anxious to reduce as much watering usage as possible. I right? think uh, a fence uh, addresses that issue. Uh, trees are susceptible to disease, rot, animals. When I was driving around this morning, I noticed several locations where there were new plantings that have already died. Now, who's, you know, the trustees are, are going to have to maintain them and replace them from time to time, um, whereas the fence is, is definitely more permanent. Um, well, I would argue that a yeah. plastic fence is not necessarily more durable. So, uh, because I. Right. Having pops that the fence falls out every year, when it was a wooden fence, it was fine because it just falls out every year. There is an issue that I came upon by accident last night when I went to the mobile station to get gas. And that is the light penetration through shrubs that you don't get through a fence. Now, if you look at the plan, you'll see that the approach to the parking area, uh, those headlights would be focused on people who are parking or attempting to park in the river shed area. And that's, I mean, I got out of my car and I thought, wow, look, those lights come right through at you. And if you'll notice, there are evergreen, this is a, this is a tree area, all out of lights, where the fence stops, um, and along the Gripway Medical Building, it's all shrubbery and no fencing. And those lights go right through the shrubbery. Sure. You talk about people going to see these people or whatever. I'll tell you right now, it'll be people that live in this building. Believe me. It I will. know it will because he's going to give me coupons. So. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so there's, that's a given. And they're going to be scooting along. You but might. They'll, but they'll go to the outside. They'll go down 
McDonald Terrace. That's the only way they'll be able to get access is to go over. No. They will go to the last parking lot, parking space, scoot across, and down. No, there's, there's, there's going to be a fence there. there. No, no, no. No, no, no. 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 This, the fence only goes to here. This is all open, it just shrubs. I think we're Mrs. Shares on the yard. Yeah, but she's dead. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so they can find their own way to see people. Right. <laughs> so if they want to get there, they will. Yeah. Is there they can climb up. <coughs> right. And they can break the boat. But they have an increased chance of diminishing that situation by having a fence. I agree. I don't have a problem with that. So we're going to have to make a, a little um, strong vote. I personally am not in favor of a six-foot fence at that elevation. That's my vote. Yeah. Fence. Then. Uh, I'm up for a fence, but not in the car design. Thank you. I'm good with the fence. Bob. I'm good as is with the fence. Okay. 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 I was out there today too, Bob. So I want they to make sure they, sure they are four they, to five feet. Actually, the tags are still on. Okay. Okay. I will go measure them. Are we all set them? Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Burrow, I'll be looking forward to the new one. Okay. Well, Where are you going to put all those rocks? I'm sorry? Where are you going to put all the rocks? Uh, That's not a project. <laughs> <laughs> There's another project in town. Beach replenishment. Yeah, something like that. Gladly, right? Extension right. Beach for the uh, construction engine. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the right size for the construction engine. So yeah. you've just got to make sure that that slope, when the riprap is gone, is fully stable. Yeah. Because we'll be watching. All eyes will be on you. Okay, so the board is voted to, um, did you take a formal vote? Are they making a motion? So we should make a motion to put up this fence. Second. All in favor? Aye. Two. No. Three to two. Three to two. Motion carries. So based on this, I think that we need to start a streetscape thing for a pre-push. Please what? Like a regional, a regional architecture streetscape study. Now that now that these projects are coming. We yep. used to have streetscapes when the MBTA was coming, which is yep. why we have the type of lighting and yep. the type of bricks and whatnot. Well, it's just, yeah, it's just we need like the, we need the, well, the form based code. The form based code is great that we have the green bush, yep. but when every project now wants to put a light like, like, on a fence around it, yep. the whole place is going to look like junk. So yep. we, we, there really needs to be something that helps inform the neighborhood from a regional perspective, if that yeah. makes sense. Because yes, obviously, us arguing with applicants doesn't always doesn't win work, the no. day. Plus, we don't understand what we're talking about either. Well, so, yeah, no. This is the first fence. Huh? I mean, the, you don't have all fencing everywhere. No, no but like, you think I don't know why I can see that. And everything's kind of like a hodge of it. That was what I thought it would dovetail nicely with the zoning years ago. So I, I want to just make a comment on, um, you know our decisions are very long and very involved. They're going to get longer and more involved. Because um, we need to spell out absolutely positively every single thing that we want people to do. Because even though we tell them because it's not written down, they don't do it. They don't do it. Even when it's written down, they don't necessarily do uh, it. But we, we have been working to some things that have got a little in this area are going to rectify that in our next ones. And I'm going to actually tell people that if they do not follow it, we will, we will issue a cease and desist order until it is. Okay? Not just absolutely asking for forgiveness instead of permission. I'm done with that. 
<laughs> That's it. Tell us how you feel. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to start our public zoning workshop with just us. Okay. We'll be. All right. All right, so I did the change to the parking that you, that you all requested last week. So it says, you know, at the discretion of the planning board yeah. under 760.8B. And I, I think that that's a good change. All the other changes are exactly what we talked about last week and they were kind of um, housekeeping changes. So it's all, it's, you know, it's a red, it should be in red. It's, um, the legal head's already gone to the paper. <laughs> um, and I kind of had to spell out these changes, you know, all one by one. So that's the parking, the common driveways. Um, the legal head is gone to the paper too. And that basically said, take out the existing 720, put in this new 720. Okay. So I just wish to point out to you that a common driveway is a driveway used as common access to two or three lots, which cannot sort, serve more than three lots in total. So if you really think that number of driveways is a problem, this now is the time you want to address it. Well, I, I guess my question is, how many people have two drivers? Some people do if you have, you have, a, if circular you have a circular driveway. driveway yeah. You can have two driveways. Yeah. I would say, you mean two, you, you you mean two in Anderson? Yeah, like when you turn around. Yeah. Like this is a you want two, two drivers. I would also say there's yeah. a fair number of folks that have like an auxiliary yeah. driver that sometimes, sometimes grab it, usually it's not paved. Yeah. Some of it's cobble. Yeah, they require to pull into a spillover parking. Yeah. Just like that kind of thing. Kids get their driver's license, they need to buy space, they want to, you know. It's fairly common. Yeah, I know. I, I just say, I, I think one of the issues with the first parish is we've gone through a lot of driveways, but I, I can't conceptualize that. I guess I think you're going to benefit you. Yeah. So I, I think this is fine here. Right? I think okay, so that's your best job on this. Mm -hmm. So then it'll go forward. Yeah. Just like it, it is, mm -hmm. uh, December 8th will be your building public year. Okay. And we'll allow a continuance for the 15th, just in case, because we always allow a continuance. Yeah. But this is this is the wording that we'll go with for the public year. This is what will be posted tomorrow. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess the next step is on your report to us. So we remain very, very busy. Um, we got three phone model permits in yesterday, and um, the public hearing will be on December 15th. Who is it? It's the McKay property. More was. Um, we, I had a meeting yesterday with um, Officer Billings, Sean McCarthy, myself, Aaron Cutler, Jeff Dirk from the Nest, and Kathleen Keene from the HB. There's right now an unmitigated traffic issue on occurring on Driftway. Um, cars are having a little bit, cars coming from the east, the harbor, are having sometimes trouble getting taking a left turn into the gas station and because the left hand lane is already occupied with cars that you know red wanting to go to old driftway so sometimes people have been blocking the intersection which of course is illegal anyways to block the intersection but um, we're trying to come up with a solution to the problem the problem mostly occurs between 9 and 10 and, you know, 12 and 1. Um, VHP is going to be looking at some solutions. It may be a signal timing thing that in 10 to 20 seconds. It may be, it may be some striping and signage, too. Um, but we're, they're, she, they're looking into that. They'll get, they'll get us something. And then um, 
the Vanessa Associates will review it. But um, as as part of any of any new approvals, um, we we really have to have the light timing looked at on every project. Um, so that that's ongoing right now. I think the planning board is going to have to be in charge of doing a study for the whole corridor. I, I think that we're going to have to do a study that goes from the Rotary up to Conservation Park, going over to the Driftway, Old Driftway, Stock Bridge, down to country, Old Country Way. Um, I think we're going to have to spend some of the money that we've been collecting for a traffic study and traffic mitigation in the area. It, it seems that it seems that a master study should we should have a master study to be able to assign mitigation to people when they come in. Um, so I'm working on at the moment getting a scope of services um, and then and a rough ballpark of the cost maybe between ten and twenty thousand dollars. The problem is is uh, we have a lot of people conflicted out of um, doing the work for us because we have all the people who have already done traffic studies in Driftway are conflicted out. I mean because so McMahon has done 33 the Driftway. Um, BHP has done the Drew and the gas station. Vanessa Associates is 61 the Driftway. They were our peer reviewer for three of the projects. And ideally, they would have been the people who do the study, but they're kind of conflict with that. So I think that you know, as I as I develop and get some information, um, I'm going to be looking for a vote for the planning board for this. Because I, it's it's obvious that we're going to run out of room. And it's obvious, too, that if a right-of-way ever has to expand, that's going to be a major problem. With Yes, I understand that this form-based zoning encourages things to go up to the road. But that's ultimately, potentially, a problem because you have no room to, if you ever had to expand your right away, to expand your right away. That, that is going to be an issue. But the rotary is going to be at <coughs> capacity. Um, you know, it's, I, I didn't look at the level of service, but I think it's, it's a C or a D right now. Um, so it still it still passes, but you know with all this new traffic, I mean we may have to be at some point talking to the state. That's food for thought. That is food for thought. And, you know, as you know, it takes years for something to get on the tip and um, you know actually go ahead. Try twenty. Yeah, it does. It takes. Yeah. You have to come up with a plan. You have to have the, the engineering, and there, that takes approximately five years. And once you have that, uh, it's submitted, and that to review with that can take another five years, and then it's it's a minimum of twenty years. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I talk with Matt Highway all the time when I was on the social coalition. We have to start planning, and you know that's why we're collecting some mitigation money. And I, I think we're going to have to use it. And um, you know, I know the police department is very supportive of helping us with the traffic study. I mean, they they believe tra at this point that traffic overall traffic study is is needed. Looks like it. Right. And then it's Dr. Donuts. 
Well, but if you listen to people right now, there's less traffic going to Dunkin' Donuts. Really? Because of Lucky Finn. Because of Lucky Finn. <laughs> but it does serve a different base. So if you go to Dunkin' Donuts, you're looking for donuts. If you're looking for breakfast, you're going to Lucky Finn. So I think we have to wait and see how that plays out on Dunkin' Donuts. I, I think things, we have to give it a little bit to see. But I mean, I spoke with some guys, you know, Officer Billings thought that, you know, less people are going to Dunkin' Donuts. What would be interesting is what happens to <coughs> Crawford Pond. Usos? Yeah, Usos. I don't know at the moment. Just should they were doing some testing, I think. Back could be in 21 email, yeah. Yeah, could be. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, that's pretty much uh, all I have. So I have a site here. Pardon me? It's a 21 So the hazardous waste. Hazardous waste. Okay. Okay. Do you want a motion? Please. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.